Thank you for joining us for the Bible study today. Today is a little different setting as I do not have my fellow Bible study companions today, but I truly want to share a word with you as we continue our discussions, as we continue to look at the subject of nationhood. Last time when we met, we discussed the role of the family as it was the foundation for the development of our nation. And we recall that God spoke to the children of Israel in chapter 6, from verse 6 to verse 9, where he asked parents that they were to be careful to model for their children and to establish those supporting functioning uh, language and doctrines to assist the children in remembering God and worshiping God. This week we want to talk a little bit about nationhood and this nationhood has to do with the issue of the law. The law as a means of establishing and sustaining our nation. I want to encourage you then to read with me from the scriptures from the Deuteronomy chapter 5. I want to just spend a little time to read the word. I trust you have your Bibles and you will share with me as we read from Deuteronomy chapter 5. Hear the word of the Lord. Moses called the people of Israel together and said, Listen carefully, Israel. Hear the decrees and regulations I'm giving you today, so you may learn them and obey them. The Lord our God made a covenant with, our, with us at Mount Sinai. The Lord did not make this covenant with our ancestors, but with all of us who are already alive today. At the mountain, the Lord spoke to you face to face from the heart of the fire. I stood as an intermediary between you and the Lord, for you were afraid of the fire and did not want to approach the mountain. He spoke to me and I passed his word unto you. This is what he said. I am the Lord your God who rescued you from the land of Egypt, the place of your slavery. You must not have any God but me. You must not make for yourself an idol of any kind or an image of anything in the heavens or on the earth or in the sea. You must not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God who will not tolerate your affections for any other gods. I lay the sins of the parents upon their children. The entire family is affected even children in the third and fourth generation of those who reject me. But I leverage unfailing love for a thousand generations of those who love me and obey my commands. You must not misuse the name of the Lord your God. The Lord will not let you go unpunished if you misuse his name. Observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy as the Lord your God has commanded you. You have six days each week for your ordinary work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath day of rest dedicated to the Lord your God. On that day, no one in your household may do any work. This includes your sons and daughters, your males and female servants, your oxen and donkeys, and even livestock, and any foreigner living among you. All your male and female servants must rest as you do. Remember that you were once slaves in Egypt. But the Lord God brought you out with his strong hand. Honor your father and mother as the Lord your God commanded you. Then you will have a long, full life in the land the Lord your God is giving you. You must not murder. You must not commit adultery. You must not steal. You must not testify falsely against your neighbor. You must not covet your neighbor's wife. You, you must not covet your neighbor's house or land, male or female servant ox or donkey or anything else that belongs to your neighbor. The Lord spoke these words to all of you assembled there at the foot of the mountain. He spoke with a loud voice from the heart of the fire surrounded by clouds and deep darkness. This was all he said at that time and he wrote his word on two stone tablets and gave them to me. The word of the Lord. So here this week we're talking about the law. The significance of the law in nation building, the importance of the law. And one of the things that jumps out at us, which strikes us from this text, 
is the fact that the Lord gave the law for the benefit of the community. So as we observe these laws, these Ten Commandments as they are commonly called, you'll notice that five of them focus the attention on God and five of them focus the attention on the community. Each of us in community has a role to play to ensure that the laws are observed and that the strength and growth and development of the community is sustained. So one of the things that we want to commend and to recommend to every nation is the fact that there, there, there is a God. God is the one who sustained this community. And the actions of God are very clear in every community, in every nation. God is actively working for the well-being of the nation, of the community. So he reminds them, I am the one who delivered you out of slavery in Egypt. By extension, that is simply saying to us that God, having delivered us from slavery, from bondage, has given to us freedom. How should we use that freedom? What should that freedom look like? Is it a freedom that says, I can do anything that I want as long as my interest is being, is being advanced? Clearly from this text, the answer is no. Freedom is not a, 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 a contribution that we are going to make to community that allows us to be selfish and only look at our own self-interest. Freedom in this sense is to help the community to grow, to develop from strength to strength. He also reminds us that none of us in this freed environment, in this deliverance from slavery that we are experiencing, should think that these actions were brought by our own selves. We are not the ones who determined our own destiny in that we did not have the power, the strength, the wisdom to deliver ourselves. God, by his mighty actions towards us as a people, delivered us. How then should we relate to God who has delivered us? God then, in this text, is giving Moses, his servant, his leader, his leadership to the community is unrivaled, it is unquestioned. God is speaking through Moses and directing the community through the actions and leadership of Moses. And he reminds the community that the community must first and foremost put God at the center of all his activities. Jesus in Matthew 6 reminds us that as far as God is concerned, that we are to make sure that the kingdom of God, the rule of God, the priorities of God are priorities in our lives. He reminds us that if we are going to have this fulfilled, just world, community, then God must have priority. So God then reminds us that we should have no other God beside him. It may sound like a very simple law, a simple instruction, but if you pause the thing with me today, this is a very difficult and challenging encounter. For you know, we are always prone to put things above God. So when we said we should have no other God before him or beside him, what he's really asking us is to make him priority in our lives, to have first place at all times. But you know that in this little thing we call life, this rat race, as it is called, we are always hustling and bustling and attempting to quote-unquote survive. And in that process, we tend to sideline God. God is calling for us to ensure that whatever we do as we seek to build nation, that we make sure that he is number one. That priority is given to him, not to our jobs, not to our families, not to our friends, 
that even to our church, God is calling us to make sure that He gets priority in our lives. So as we look forward to this issue of nation building, as we pursue it, as we seek to make it the thing that occupies our time, our creativity, our energies, please, I remind you, make God priority. I be the first to admit that it is never an easy task. We remind ourselves of the story that Jesus told us of the rich young man who came to him and asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Now this is a young man that from all indication was a very responsible young man. He pursued wealth, he acquired wealth. When Jesus asked him about the scriptures, he reminds Jesus that he knew it from he was a child. And then Jesus discerned that there was something fundamentally wrong with what he was saying. Jesus said to him, listen, here's what I want you to do. I want you to separate yourself from your wealth. I want you to go sell what you have, take the resources, give it to the poor, redistribute it to the poor, and then come and follow me. When he considered what Jesus said, he said to himself, no, I can't afford to do that. Why was that so? Simply because he had now made his wealth priority in his life. Jesus was now saying to him that your wealth has now become your God. We have to be careful that the things that we are pursuing in life does not come and displace God. In other words, it does not take priority in our lives. Not an easy task, a very difficult task, but we believe that God has an interest in this regard. So, as he gives us these, these commandments for our community, for our nation, please remember, the emphasis is not so much on the legality of it. It is more on the moral and on the ethical point of it. That's the emphasis. Because very often we can, we, and we usually do this, we tend to follow the letter of the law and feel that as long as we are fulfilling the letter of the law, then we do not need to care about the spirit of the law. Jesus seems to teach us otherwise. You know? So, for example, when he spoke to the Pharisees, he reminded them that even though the law says thou shalt not commit adultery, Although you may never have had a sexual encounter with a, 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 a person that was a test, what he was simply saying to us, that even if you think about it, if you have never murdered anybody but you threatened them, then Jesus says you would have undermined not just the letter of the law but the spirit of the law. The second thing about these laws is that they focus on the community. It is about building strong, enduring relationship. It is about ensuring that there is trust in the community. And therefore, he reminds us that every life is sacred. And therefore, we should not engage in murder. We should not be killing our community members. He encourages us that we should not bear false witness. He encouraged us that we should not covet we should not allow greed to dominate our lives, therefore undermining the relationship that we have with our fellow citizens. He is reminding us of how important it is for us to be thinking about our neighbors, to ensure that the best interest of our neighbor becomes the best interest of ours. If we protect and love our neighbors, he is suggesting that our neighbors will reciprocate that relationship with us and that will guarantee our safety. It will guarantee trustworthiness. It will ensure that the values that are important to sustain our community will be maintained. So this week, as we think about nation. And as we think about the laws, as we think about God, may I remind all of us this week how important it is for us to ensure that we love the Lord. We remember His acts of kindness. We remember His actions towards us. 
He delivers us out of slavery. He breaks the bondage. He makes us free. And in this freedom, He gives us laws that will guide us and nurture us to ensure the very best self that we are. That we should focus on that which is moral, that which is ethical, that which is religious. And as we love God, as we seek to please God, He reminds us of also the importance of taking care of our communities. So if we will observe the laws given, if we will be mindful that each of us have a right to this space, to this community, to share in this life, then everything that we do would be done to ensure the upliftment of our fellow citizens and by extension our community. Can I encourage you then to join us this week to reflect a little bit on this matter of laws, to reflect upon this nation and the responsibility that we have to ensure that we please God and in pleasing God we care for our neighbors. I thank you so much for joining me today as we reflect. And as we continue the celebrations of our nation, Jamaica, I would very much love to pray for the nation and to ask God to enable us that we would take responsibility for our own action and that in this responsibility that is being displayed, we will continue to love God and love our neighbors as ourselves. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you indeed for this nation, Jamaica land we love. We thank you for where you have taken us thus far. We, like the children of Israel, were in slavery. And you brought the bonds of slavery. And you have set us free. That freedom that has come to allow us to realize our fullest potential. To establish and celebrate our identity, our creativity. We give you thanks. And today we place our nation before you. We pray for our leaders, our political leaders. We pray for our religious leaders. We pray for our civic leaders. We pray for our business leaders. We pray for the institutions that are in our society. We remember the families. We remember our educational system. Lord, we remember the judicial system and those who administer that. We pray that together, as a people, as a nation, we will look to you for guidance and for strength. That as we go forward, each of our lives will please you and will make a significant contribution to the development of our nation and our respective communities. Bless our people, remember our children, even in these difficult and trying times. We give you thanks now, for Christ's sake. Amen. We thank you for having joined us for this reflection today. Join us again next week at 6 o'clock when we will once again have another time in the word of the Lord. We ask God to bless you now as we sign off today. God bless you.